Hello folks, I hope that you are having just the best day in your life today. Today we're going to be taking a look at Journey to the West Volume 4. Yes, I finished it. 100 chapters, 2319 pages later, uh, 50 days later, because I was reading two chapters a day uh, at a pace of about a half a, about a, a chapter every half hour and about an hour a day. It was an epic journey, but boy, am I glad that I went on it. I'm going to be giving this Chinese epic a 9 out of 10. It concluded pretty strongly. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Chinese epic journey to the West. And then I have a question for you uh, that I'm going to unpack for you as well. And that question is, is this an adventure module? Um, so we'll take a look at that question. But first, let's take a look at some of the uh, various things that are happening. As a reminder, Journey to the West was written in China hundreds of years ago. It's considered one of their four great classic novels of all time, along with uh, things like uh, like uh, the Water Mar like Outlaws of the Marsh and Romance of the Three Kingdoms, uh, which I've, I've read Romance of the Three Kingdoms, but not the, not the other two. Um, although I certainly may want to. A Journey to the West was on my death queue. The other two are not on my uh, death list, my bucket list, which I call my death queue. Uh, but again, this was just a, so much fun, uh, and it was great reading, and there's a lot of fun things that happen. Uh, basically, what's going to wind up happening... Uh, is that you have a main character named San Zhang. He is a Tang priest uh, from the Tang dynasty in China. And he is a priest in Buddhism. And he is setting out for a journey from China to far to the western part of India to, to Thunder Peak where they'll ascend and find the western heaven. And there they're going to worship the Buddha and bring back these sacred scriptures from Buddha uh, and guarding him and going with him are three uh, 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 supporters. Uh, the first supporter is Sun Wang Wang Zung. This is a this is the 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 monkey brother monkey, the great sage, eagling heaven. He has a lot of powers. He's the most powerful of the four, and he definitely has a lot of things going for him. Uh, the next one is uh, is called Pig. Uh, he is. Uh, hungry all the time. The book calls refers to him as an idiot. He has a, 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 a love a hate relationship with uh, the the Monkey King. Uh, they're definitely um, in, in there too. He's a powerful guy. He's not as powerful as the Monkey King, but he's definitely a powerful magical uh, guy. Uh, and then the third one is Fire Sand, and he's also another powerful guy. Although he's not powerful magic, he's definitely a fighter, if you will. And it's pretty powerful. Uh, and he has a demon holding staff. Uh, whereas uh, the, 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 uh, the pig fights with a nine pronged rake. And our, our main character, Brother Monkey, fights with an iron, with a gold banded cudgel, uh, which weighs thousands and thousands of pounds and can't be lifted by normal people. Uh, and so there's a lot of these, you know, these fantastic feats that are happening. There's a lot of bad guys that they run into. Over the 16-year journey from China to Western India, and they run into demons, they run into spirits, they run into undead, uh, they run into de lots of demons, <laughs> uh, gods, uh, fallen uh, celestial creatures, uh, and that sort of thing. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways, although there are a few ways that happen multiple times. Uh, there's a lot of different things, and and the encounters that they have typically, although there are a few exceptions here and there, are multiple chapters. Um, so they're not just you know, hey, here's a bad guy for a chapter, here's a bad guy for a chapter, but they're multiple bad guys. Like for example, there was one where there was a kingdom that had been taken over by a demon after a, by, by a demon monk uh, after the the monk killed uh, the previous king. And then took over the previous king's body, uh, and so, and then the king comes and finds out. Uh, the king's ghost will come and let let our main character know, our main Tang priest, Sanzang know, and then he'll let the disciples know. Then then they'll go and rescue uh, the town, and that's uh, them against the the king of the town is like a few chapters long, right? That story's not told in one chapter, in ten or fifteen pages long. Um, another one is where they come across a kingdom of women who get pregnant by drinking from a certain by drinking from a certain river and can abort their pregnancy by drinking from a certain spring, and of course, the, some of the men drink them from the river. Now they're pregnant, pregnant monks. So much fun. <laughs> uh, 
so it's it's pretty fun uh, to to have this sort of a, a this this these these crazy things that are happening. Uh, but there are two concepts that happen multiple times. Uh, the first will happen when Sinzang gets captured, uh, and sometimes uh, Pig and Friar Sin will get captured along with him, and only Monkey will survive. And he'll get captured, uh, and because he is this pure guy. So the idea is that if you eat him, this pure person, you'll live forever. And so a lot of bad guys and demons uh, that they run across will try to kill him and eat him and thus have for uh, the ability to live forever. Um, the other thing that you'll run into a few times here and there are evil female uh, demons and spirits who will try to uh, seduce Sanzang or marry him. Knowing that if they have sex with him, who this guy is a virgin, again, they will get his bounty and be able to live forever. See, so apparently you can either eat him or, or have sex with him and you get to live forever. <laughs> and so uh, those are the major antagonistic issues that they run into cross. Um, so he has to get freed like a lot of times uh, from, the, from the clutches of somebody who's trying to eat him or seduce him. Uh, so that happens a lot. But it happens. Uh, and so that happens out there. So that's that's the story for you in a nutshell. Um, now, what my question is: Is this the first adventure module? Um, this is certainly well read. Um, you're journeying from one place to another. You're encountering a lot of things along it. It definitely reads like an adventure campaign. Like you're going from one place to another. You're, along the way, you're having encounters. Uh, you are, you know, running running across demons. You're running across bad guys. You're running across undead. You're running across, you know. Um, monsters and animals and animals like tigers uh, so there's a lot of the things that you're out there fighting against you're fighting for the cause you're fighting for what's right uh, and just uh, the idea of this long epic journey uh, from point a to point b that also includes a lot of different things along the lines again it feels a bit like uh an original like like an adventure module that you might get from a role-playing game like dungeons and dragons and so that's my key question here if you've read Journey to the West, have you, did you think of it as such? Um, I would be more than happy to engage you with that further in the comments below. Just let me know if that take is something that resonates with you or not in the comments. Uh, and that's it. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. I finished book four. Well, I finished Journey to the West. That was crazy. A craziness. Uh, but I, I go ahead and be happy to talk to you about it if you've, if you've done so. Um, or if you've read part of it, the first book, if you've taken the journey to the West journey with me, I am more than happy to welcome you to the to on the other side of these of this journey. Um, if you like this video, please feel free to hit that subscribe button because there's going to be a lot more of these that follow in fantasy, science fiction, and horror. And then finally, hey, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things happening in our lives, right? And we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact you, you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling. And I appreciate it. So thanks again and have a great day.